So as you're trying to find maybe the right opponent for Brett, he defeats Bob Backlund in a match that airs on superstars on July 30th. And this is the now famous match where Backlund snaps after the match and turns heel and essentially becomes Mr. Backlund. Did Vince know that this was the direction he wanted to go, that Backlund might be a transitional champ, might get some sniffs at the main event, or was it, Hey, this is a former champion who we want to make sure he has a good match. And well, we know Brett can do it and that's how it happened. Well, (laughs) I think, you know, this was something that, that Pat and I really wanted to try because you never got your Bob Backlund heel run right in the seventies. Bobby was, I don't know that Bob was ever this guy that people say, oh, he's a dynamic worker. He's this, he's that. But the real human being, Bob Backlund, who believes in himself and and there's not a bad bone in Bob Backlund's body. You could view that kind of heelish. Right. And so we thought, what if we just had Bobby go over the edge a little bit and um, what better foil for Backlund then Brett Hart, because, uh, you know, Brett was all that shit. Right. So it was an experiment. We weren't sure if it was going to work. We really weren't. And that's why we, we looked at, we were concentrated in the Northeast a little bit at that time, more so than usual. And, um, I think we were in where the hell were we ocean city, Maryland for that. Um, and it was. It was bizarro land, but the audience, man, they, they took to it and they were so pissed. And we looked at each other and went, Hmm, we may have some here because Vince wasn't, Vince wasn't around for a lot of this. You know, he was, he was doing other things and, um, it was, we were experimenting we were getting out there with some different stuff, but I thought it worked. I thought that the, especially that traditional Northeastern, uh, uh, audience that was so used to the red, white, and blue Bob Backlund that they're like, Hey, no, nah, wait a minute, man. That was my guy. So what did Brett pretty- think of this idea? It feels like part of him would have really respected <laughs> the, the legacy of what he did. But at the other time he had to be like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> and it was more of like, what the fuck, man? It was more like, I got to fucking work with him every night now. Um, well, cause you had a famous saying on here years ago when, when you're trying to make the transition from Hulk Hogan to Bret Hart. And you would say that a lot of times the thing around the office that was said is what would we do for Hogan? And I'm not saying this to be weird. I don't think we would have ever seen Backlund Hogan. Oh God. If I had the opportunity to Backlund Hogan, then I would have done it in a heartbeat. That would have been even bigger for Bobby. Bobby would have had so much fucking material to work with there. Oh my God. <laughs> because Hogan was so opposite of right. Backlund. Whereas Brett is kind of all the things that Bobby kind of stands up for, except for the long, greasy hair. And, you know, we came up with things, but. It was just the, um, I thought they had great matches. Oh, they had tremendous matches that I loved watching, but I wasn't in the ring working with them. <laughs> so, uh, it was what it was. It's amazing to me that this is something we're even really discussing that Bob Backlund had a run, man, but he did. And, uh, I'm sure there was nobody who was more thrilled about that than, than Brett, uh, SummerSlam 94, August 29th from United center in Chicago. Uh, Brett is going to defeat Owen in the classic cage match. All the family members get involved after, and Davey boy is back in the WWF now too, to keep the feud going, but thank God taker versus faker went on in the main event. What in the world? Tell us about this classic cage match and how it was somehow not the main event. 
main event was the return of the undertaker and for the first time ever it was oh my god can you imagine having the undertaker versus the undertaker it's a once in a lifetime opportunity here pal so that was the attraction and Owen and Brett went about 20 minutes heavy in their match. And, uh, it wasn't like you had a, an experienced undertaker against an experienced undertaker. <laughs> you had the undertaker against, um, someone who wasn't that experienced at being the undertaker. So they needed that time that having to cut their time in half was, was not a pleasant thing. I don't know if that would have helped any more or not, but at the same time, it uh, wasn't an ideal situation. Can't imagine that he would have been thrilled with that. Survivor Series on November 23rd is back in San Antonio, this time on Thanksgiving Eve. Brett's going to lose the title to Backland. Of course, it's a submission match. And uh, we've got Owen's Academy Award winning uh, performance here, convincing us he all had compassion for Brett. He convinces his mother, Helen, to throw in the towel. And, uh, there you go. Brett is no longer the champ. Do you think Brett knew the plan of diesel at that point? Or how was it discussed with him? Because we know that Backlund's only going to have the, the title for a cup of coffee. You know, we were, I didn't know we knew the plan of diesel. Yes, we did. I mean, I'm not saying that was, you know, Hey, we were thinking about it and got there, but we needed to do this first. I don't know what Brett knew at that point, but it was, okay, let's try this thing and, and go from there. 